Welcome to the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, 2019. Our readings for today are Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 6 through 13. That will be the main basis for the sermon today. And the Gospel lesson from Luke 21, verses 5 through 28. We'll be singing... Um, down at Cooley City, our opening hymn will be How Firm a Foundation, Ye Saints of the Lord. And here at Zion, we'll be singing Fruitful Trees, The Spirit Sowing. Then uh, we'll, at both places, we'll be singing The Day is Surely Drawing Near, and The Church is One Foundation. Our children's hymn today is I've Been Redeemed. So, uh, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What's going to happen? We all want to know, don't we? What's going to happen? The Thessalonians wanted to know what was going to happen. And so they asked Paul, Paul, what do you know? What, what is going to happen? When is the end going to be? When is Jesus going to return? Uh, how will we know to be ready? When will it, how, what's going to happen? So Paul wrote them in the uh, first letter to the Thessalonians about the day of the Lord. It will come suddenly like a thief in the night. It will come soon. Well, the Thessalonians read that and said, if the end is going to happen soon, then we might as well stop everything else we're doing and get ready for it to happen. That seems to be what they were doing because Paul wrote to them the second letter to the Thessalonians with some more instructions about the end and the end times and preparing for the end. Uh, in chapter 1, Paul gave them uh, more details about Judgment Day and about the judgment that God has told us over and over that there will be Judgment Day because, uh, which, well, I understand if that makes you a little bit nervous, but God is just, and it's only right, justice, is that sin must be punished. But if Jesus, uh, uh, but you don't have to worry. Jesus was punished for all of your sins, so if you believe in him and trust in him, your, your sin's already paid for, your punishment has been made. You will pass the judgment. On judgment day, you will be glorified with all the saints, to the glory of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All your sins are washed away. You've been redeemed. You don't have to worry. Jesus aced the test for you, gave you the answers. <laughs> In chapter 2, Paul discusses the man of lawlessness. We read those readings last week. Paul says that this man will stand in the temple of God and will exalt himself above all other men. Uh, the Antichrist, therefore, inside the temple of God, will be from inside the church, not from outside the church. Uh, Paul doesn't seem to indicate that this has already happened, but now, 2,000 years later, in our day, there are some who stand in Christian churches, or churches that claim to be Christian, uh, who, who claim to stand as the one exalted man, the representative who will judge all others and stands between us and God. Well, after Jesus returns, then it will be completely obvious who this is or was. But, but for now, uh, if one of these are the men of law of the man of lawlessness, then they're still being restrained. And uh, even if Paul. Even when Paul says that the mystery of lawlessness was already at work in his day, in, this, in his writing to the Thessalonians. Again, do not be afraid of, of this man, this antichrist, this man of lawlessness. Paul tells us that Jesus will kill him with a breath. He can do nothing to you. But be aware of anyone who claims to set, be set between God and you and stay away from them. Don't follow them. Uh, you don't need to add to your troubles. Paul then encourages the Thessalonians to stand firm for the truth and pray for Paul and the apostles. May the, 
He wrote, May the Lord direct your heart to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. Now, from a human perspective, things are going to get worse. They're going to get even worse than they are now. But do not be afraid. Do not give up hope. Christ has already won the victory. It is waiting for just the right moment to return for the victory parade, to finish the work. So stand firm. We'll get through this. Night will not last forever. And then the eternal day will dawn, and we will be living in it for the rest of, et of that eternity. So as I said before, the, the Thessalonians heard that this last day was coming soon, and what did they do? <laughs> they got short-timers attitude. They, they stopped working and doing the day-to-day the -day chores, thinking that Jesus was about to appear any moment. And he could. Uh, we need to be ready for that, too. But uh, since we don't know when it will be, uh, there won't be a rapture or a thousand-year reign of Jesus in Jerusalem. The reign of Jesus is now in the church, uh, where we are, the people of God who listen to him and follow his his lead. The tribulation uh, is now. Things are getting worse and worse. The, the man of lawlessness is already in the world now, but he is restrained by God because God is more powerful than him. Jesus, the Son of God, has already shown that by rising from the dead. We won't know how all of these things fit together until that day, exactly when, uh, until Jesus appears again in the clouds just as he ascended into heaven 2,000 years ago, we'll, we'll, after that happens, we'll look back and we'll say, ah, oh, <laughs> we'll see how it all fit together, and well, it happened just the way God said it. If I'd only opened my eyes, I, I would have seen it all. I would have known what was, about, what was going on. Well, not quite. Sin still blurs our vision for now, but it will be removed and we will see clearly on that day. So just like the Thessalonians, I also encourage you, stand firm and do not lose hope, no matter how bad things may seem. Our Heavenly Father is almighty, and His Son, Jesus, has already won the battle and has promised that he, He's going to end the, all of the rest of this with a breath. Uh, we have nothing to fear. So we continue living in this tension that Jesus could return at any moment. <laughs> uh, and we need to be ready for that, but it also could be a while. And so we need to also continue doing what we are doing and be ready if it takes a lifetime or, so, or more. Not sitting around just waiting for the clock to run out, for the, uh, for the, so you can go home and, and work is done. There's still work to do. There's still souls that may be snatched from the fire. As long as you're here, no matter how restricted your life becomes, mentally or physically, a God still has something for you to do. Still work for, to be done. He's not, he's not done with you yet. He's not ready for you. Uh, and I'm not saying this because any of you are prone to idleness. Just the opposite, actually. It seems to me that for our, the size of, of our congregation and the average age, we do more things in the community than any other church. We still, or especially at the food bank, we're still contributing to the food bank more per person than, than the bigger and more popular churches. Not that we're alone in that. We couldn't keep the food bank going by ourselves. It's a community effort even beyond the churches. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, the new, new pastors in town commented that most of the volunteers working there were from our church. And at first I denied that because uh, we're not going through the same rotation of churches taking turns like we, we used to do. We have people who are there every week and, and, uh, and so um, many of you who, who used to show up and help out at the food bank are no longer able to. And, and, uh, but then I started counting you know, the people who are there regularly and, and I guess half or more of them were. Uh, connected to our church, either as members or, or uh, uh, attending Bible classes or, or something. Uh, 
Not because I'm always begging you to go out there and work and do what God wants you to do. Uh, I think that is uh, it's because we more clearly teach the good news of God's love and salvation for you, forgiveness of your sins, Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, when you're constantly being be lectured and being told what to do, you get tired of it and pff, you don't want to do that. But when you hear about God's love uh, and are reassured of your salvation, about what God has done for you, then you can't help but follow his example. Go out uh, and share with the good news with others uh, through deeds or words. So, uh, so don't worry. God loves you. And keep it up until he uh, appears again. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.